In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you some basics for creating your own particles. There's the particle room in PowerDirector that you have that has a number of predefined, customized particles that you can use, and you can even edit them. But in this tutorial, we're going to show you the first steps of how to create particles of your very own from scratch. I have on the screen a movie. It's a somewhat abstract look of a spinning gear. And let's assume that I'd like to create a particle to use for this and for any other project I want to do in the future. What are some ways that I could begin to design the particle? Well, I need to go to the particle room. That's the spray of dots, the icon on the left, or I can press the F6 key. And when I do that, it takes me into all the particles that I have loaded in my current version of PowerDirector. And I can take any of these, and we have other exercises about beginning to modify them. But let's create one from scratch without anything else. To do that, you move your mouse above the options where you see all the thumbnails, and you click on the folded page with a plus in the lower right corner. That will create a brand new particle object. And when you click on that, you get into the particle screen and then it immediately opens another screen looking for particles. We're going to close that for now. But I like to describe this screen. We have a file edit view playback and share option at the left. We have a large preview area. And depending on whether this little blue arrow is pointing up or down, well, we're going to click on it. We're going to now display the tracks because these are important when creating particles. And now I need to add something into my particle room since there's nothing there. I'm going to click on the plus to add a particle object. This will open the screen we saw a moment ago. And it opens this default screen. Now one thing I'd encourage you to do is either write down or try to remember this file location because you can navigate to any other file on your system to find the images you might want for particles. But if you do, it's hard to figure out how to go back to this location to use any of these if indeed you'd like to in the future. So the basic location is your boot drive, your program files, CyberLink, PowerDirector 17 or whatever version you have, and then the PFX Designer subfolder, and then default image. Now, that's not what you normally think it would be. If I click on PFX Designer, I have one called Default Particle. That's not it. I want the default image background. So that's what gives me the, these pre-designed images as possibilities for my particles. Now, some of these files look like they are basically invisible, but it's because they have very slight and indefinite objects for particles. And depending on the background, you'll be able to see what they are. Let's take a simple one here. Uh, let's take a uh, this blue dot. It's just called 12-6. Why, I don't know. And I'll click on it and open it. And now I have this dot as a particle. Now there are several different styles of particles. There's different emit methods. So your screen may start out different than this. When I click on emit method, I find that I have four options on how the particles can begin to move. They can begin to move from a point, they can move down from a line, they can move out in a circle, or they can move in a mask, and I can pick my masks. There's more exercises, we'll deal with that later, but let's just do the simple one, which is a point. So I can control the place that they start with. That's the emit area, that's the red and green circle. I can control the direction to which they travel, and I can control the width to which they spread. Do they spread out in a single straight line? Or if I drag on either of the red bars, I can spread them out a lot wider. So let's just play this and show you what we have. And here they are coming out from that red and 
green center and they're spreading out according to the defaults and we can change all of these parameters we'll show you more about that later now we we notice that the option on the left if I click on fades the default I have to click on stop my little box is it will normally fade in and fade out and if you that's what these two areas are here my start time and my end time we can change that in our defaults how long our particles run uh, but right now fade in is checked fade out is checked I'm going to turn off fade out and immediately you notice a change here in this track let's change one other thing while we have this open we're going to make this narrower we're going to change the point of origin we're actually going to put it off the screen and we'll click on the arrow and that will change the direction so now they will come in from off the screen and move in this direction along this line and the width will be what we see here if we click on play given this submit method that's what that particle will do and there are all kinds of other things we can control if you want it way off the screen you can drag it as far as you want and you can click on the the plus or minus to magnify the screen so I can see and control this way off my visible screen any way I want and then I can simply click on fit and when I play it I'll see the consequences as these items come in according to where I set them up again you always have to click on the the stop button in order to get back into the edit mode now the nice thing about this is I can have more than one particle at a time let's let's take another one let's take this uh, beer bottle and click on open and we can move this on the other side of the screen we can change the direction of it we can narrow the number that we see and then when we play this combined set we find that we have two particles now notice too that when we do this the particle on the lower track will overwrite the particle on the higher track and the default is new particles will appear on the lower track I want to change that all I need to do is click on the left by the number of the track it'll turn into a bit of a fist and drag up and now my particle one which was my bottles is on a lower track well higher track but it will be behind the red ball the blue and yellow balls now when they intersect I'm going to make it so they do a little easier here you notice the blue will be in front of the bottles so when I hit play here they come across and these items because they're on track two now will be in front of the items below so the stacking order is important as you begin to design your particles now there's much more to learn so we're going to have several lessons we also have adding images we also have backgrounds and then we have all the features on the left side about particle design that we'll get into we have separate lessons on some of these about modifying particles but we're going to revisit them as we begin to look at designing particles on your own in CyberLink PowerDirector.